Sculptor Robert Murray grew up in Canada, and he left the province in 1960, in September as a matter of fact, to settle into New York City. There he occupied various studios until 1974. From there he moved to the countryside in Pennsylvania. Bob spends most of the summer in a place called Point of Barrow in Canada. He gets there by seaplane, and that's where he designs and works on sculpture for next year. We're going to ride along with Bob, leaving Pennsylvania and heading up towards Toronto, Parry Sound, Point of Barrow, and finally to Lookout Island, where the summer facility is. The scenery in that part of Ontario is absolutely spectacular. I now know where Bob gets his inspiration for his sculptures. The plane is on uh, amphib floats, uh, as we see it here. Uh, you'll notice that it trans uh, transitions over to um, straight floats, and uh, that's the way I flew the plane for quite a number of years. I used to do the changeover um, at Dave Quam's place at Warwick, New York, when I lived in New York City, and uh, then when I moved to Pennsylvania, um, I tried a couple of bases in on the Chesapeake, and then finally I started leaving my floats up in Aurelia, Ontario, about... Uh, on oh, 70, 80 miles north of uh, Toronto. And I'd leave them there for the winter and then change the plane over from wheels to floats every uh, spring and fall. Uh, the nice thing about the amphibs, I don't have to go through that anymore. So this is uh, uh, making an approach now into Perry Sound uh, seaplane base. Perry Sound is uh, the, fr the, uh, the closest large town to where uh, I go in the summer. It's right on the highway. It's right on the edge of the Georgian Bay. Um, and uh, this is a, was a place where I used to get fuel uh, when the plane was on straight floats. Uh, it's also a, a place that uh, I can get to by car from the mainland um, to uh, shop, uh, do laundry and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Point of Barrel itself is uh, a pretty small facility. So here we are coming. Now it's kind of unusual about these photos. I noticed most of them that Davis selected, they're all showing relatively smooth water. I uh, wish it was the case. Uh, the water can be pretty rough up in this area. And um, it can occasionally... Um, call for a change of plans, especially uh, out on the edge of our island if it, uh, if the wind gets up. And I never really know from uh, until I get there uh, the first time whether uh, we're going to find good water or not because there's no really decent weather forecasting in that area. But whatever you find at Perry Sound, generally speaking, it's uh, the same kind of conditions up, um, up on the island. So here we are coming into the uh, seaplane dock at uh, Perry Sound Harbor. See one of the cruise boats in the background there. So this, um, when the plane was on the water, this was a good uh, place to come for fuel. They operate a, um, about four or five float planes here, mostly on flight seeing trips uh, around the bay. And um, um, they're a nice group of people and, and um, it's fun to see them every year. So I'm digging out ropes for the first time here, which are hopefully fairly close by, and the young lady is tying up the stern of the floats while I secure the front. I think we ended up moving the plane later uh, in order to make room for their aircraft or one of their incoming aircraft, but the gas hose will actually reach all the way up to, uh, up to this location. So from Perry Sound, uh, once I got fuel, from Perry Sound I went up to Point of Barrel Station. Uh, this is on the mainland, on the highway, and uh, it uh, consists of about three marinas, a general store, a post office, and a liquor store, um, and, uh, and, a, and a filling station. Uh, uh, no mechanic there, but uh, a place where a lot of people get uh, gas for their vehicles. So this was uh, the closest place to our island where um, you could get food. Uh, if I've got a big shop to do, I generally, as I say, um, 
go in by boat to uh, the station. I have a vehicle parked there, and I drive down the 30 or 40 miles to Perry Sound to Shaw. This is a uh, this film was being recorded on a GoPro camera, which of course is quite wide angle, so everything looks much further away than it is here as far as the shoreline is concerned. This is actually a pretty tight little bay. It's during the summer, it's filled with a lot of boats, and uh, it's not a good place to try and land a seaplane, even though you've got the advantage of seeing where everybody else is, uh, whereas the boaters can't always see you at all, or are or, or not aware of you, or can't hear you, or can't see you. But uh, this is the early part of the season, and there's hardly any boats around, so it's easy for me to get into with a plane. And uh, at the beginning and end of summer, I come in every few days, if nothing else, just to check my mail. It's about a 10 or 12 minute flight in the plane, um, and quite a bit longer by boat. Now, what we're looking at out here is the main channel that goes out into the open water, and that's mainland on the right, and um, uh, an island on the left, and that's sort of typical of this of this area. There's a point of barrels located in a big dog leg. So that was a quick trip into the grocery store, I guess. And uh, as soon as I clear myself, then I'll head on out to the island. It's not unusual that other planes will come in here on charters, but uh, this time of year it's pretty pretty rare, but uh, it's generally a good idea to sort of check yourself beforehand anyway when you take off. But the main problem here is to make sure that there's no boats coming down that channel uh, in the notch ahead there. That um, sometimes can ruin your day. You just get started on a takeoff run and all of a sudden the boat comes around the corner. Uh, so it's um, it's it's uh, I've never had any uh, serious close calls, but I've had to abort takeoffs on many occasions or go around on a landing because of um, boats suddenly appearing out of nowhere. So this is called Point of Barrel Station because at one time there was no highway, and people got here by railroad, <clears throat> and and. What we've missed here at the end of the little waterway is actually a railroad bridge, an overhead bridge. There's still no train service any longer, but there's freight service up, up in that area. <clears throat> so there's a marina on my left and there's a marina on my right. And there's one other marina uh, just around the corner from this place. And, and uh, that's basically it. It's not... Uh, uh, there's not a lot of commercial activity up in this particular area, although there are a lot of people on the on the islands. Uh, almost every island of any size has got uh, one or two cottages on it. Cottages, they call them up here. I still call our place a cabin. So this is the main boat channel going out to the open water. That light spot on the horizon in fact, is, in fact, the, the, uh, the Georgian Bay proper. And that's mainland on your right, and, um, and then all kinds of islands um, on the left and, and all the way down Perry Sound, past Perry Sound, another 60 miles. So there's thousands of islands along the side of the Hudson Bay, or the Georgian Bay, rather. So this is our island, their island we're on, and that little notch in there is the inlet where I keep the plane and the boat. Uh, that's important because on your left is uh, the west, uh, westerly direction. Here I'm landing in the boat channel towards the west, and uh, there's 70 or 80 miles of open water there, and it can get uh, it can get damn rough on occasion. And uh, to some to, <clears throat> sometimes it's bad enough that I have to land on this side of the island and uh, and, and uh, in spite of the fact that there's a series of reefs uh, beginning on your left there that run across the mouth of our inlet and that does a lot to protect the waters where I land. So here I am coming into uh, the inlet that you saw a minute ago. That's um, uh, our first cabin up on the rock there on the left. Uh, a metal kind of Quonset style building. So this
this water in the inlet uh, fluctuates a great deal in terms of depth. It's hard to believe the Great Lakes can can uh, be as varied as they are in terms of levels, but particularly here on in Michigan, which are interconnected and don't have much control over their outflow. There are locks on uh, Superior and uh, and both Erie and um, and to some extent even Ontario's uh, controlled, but. Uh, there's, there's over the years I've been up there, the water on the shoreline has, has varied as much as five feet. And at this particular moment, uh, the water was at one of its lowest points, and uh, there's lots of rocks visible. So I'm coasting into uh, the seaplane dock now. It's a modular dock made uh, by jet float. Um, since these uh, photos were shot, it's been enlarged somewhat. Uh, there's a um, an, another ring of uh, modules around the outside of it, and um, and the boat dock has been replaced with new material, which is gray and uh, not so hot on your feet. That's one of the drawbacks. So these are roughly 18-inch floating cubes that are connected like a like a Lego set. So here's the most recent cabin. It replaces what was our very first cabin, and uh, the contractor uh, hasn't taken away all his stuff yet. It's more or less finished, and it's been there for uh, several years now, and that uh, actually serves as my studio in the summer. And I think at the end of this walk, uh, those are storage and uh, compos- uh, um, um, compost toilet, and those are the first of two sleeping cabins uh, further back there. When I first began building up here, the style was to um, have one main cabin and then sleeping cabins uh, a little ways away so for privacy and noise and so on. Um, so here I'm leaving the dock again. I push the plane out to the corner of the dock and then hold it in place with that rope uh, until the engine catches. Now, it's dead calm water here. Again, as I say, this is pretty unusual. We can get uh, serious white caps in here on occasion. Um, and, and in order not to have the plane blowing around where you don't want it to go, um, the, that handling line is, is um, good for keeping it in place until the engine kicks over. So once again, this is the inlet um, I'm leaving, and I think I uh, just made an early flight around to see who was up and um, see which of my neighbors had arrived. Often there's nobody around when I get there, and there's nobody there when I leave because I spend pretty much the whole summer there, and that can be from uh, late May, June, uh, right through till the end of September. One year I was actually up there at the, uh, the beginning of October. It starts to get pretty cool in the evenings. We have a uh, stove in one of the ca- sleeping cabins, which makes it nice, it's, but nothing is really winterized. I did go up here with a friend on one occasion who also had a Super Cup on skis, and on M5 skis, and he was his island was about a mile and a half back of ours, and um, that was uh, a pretty uh, uh, interesting way to see the countryside from the ski plane. Uh, this generally freezes over in the winter, And uh, about a mile out from the edge of the islands, uh, you get a half-mile seawall that's uh, really quite spectacular. So this is typical of the cover up there, kind of um, uh, lots of water, lots of muskeg, um, thousands of islands, uh, some of them with pretty good-sized trees on them, others just scrub oak and and, uh, small pines, cedar trees some birch. So this is sort of, this is just off to the edge of our island, actually. Uh, And I guess I'm circling around for a landing. And this time, uh, it is glassy water. I'm coming in from the northwest towards our island. That's mainland on the left. And this is typical of the whole shoreline up there. A lot of exposed granite. pretty dangerous boating if you don't know where you're going because some of the stuff is just subsurface. The advantage of the plane again is that you can you can see most of this stuff. But, uh, it's pretty clear water. Um, 
you could only see so far down into it, but but uh, it's uh, unlike some bodies of water I've flown off of it. It's it's basically quite clear water, and if you, when you get into shallow spots, you can see the rocks very uh, easily. So here I'm making a rather cautious glassy water landing towards the uh, basically flying it on towards our inlet and you'll see that some of the uh, major rocks are marked with uh, with floating balls that uh, makes it a little easier particularly at night with a boat for um, navigating this inlet the last few years the water has come up um, two years ago it came up 18 inches they're expected to go up almost that much again this year so there is a kind of a fluctuation in it but the long-term forecast is that is for the water to keep going down and uh, we keep hoping that uh, they'll put a lock on on the bottom of Lake Huron um, at, on the St. Clair River uh, that would help regulate Huron to some extent So there's a fairly deep channel just where the you see the plane, and then every once in a while you'll see rocks coming up on the right there, uh, where there are shallow spots. But um, the, at one time, uh, this body of water probably uh, penetrated well into the island. They still take canoe back there, but the last few years, as I say, it's water's been so shallow you can't get in there. So here's the modular dock again, uh, which is now three units wide instead of just two, four units wide at the back. It uh, makes it a lot more stable. And it's got plugs all around the edges of it, lots of places to tie the plane down. And what I generally do is suspend it within the uh, U uh, from the struts or the bow cleat. And, uh, and then there's a wing tie down on the outside of the dock that goes right down to anchors in the ground. And, so the plane has ridden out some terrible windstorms in there. I don't worry about it anymore. So this is the path to our metal building, which used to be our my studio. But um, while the other building was going up, uh, my wife and daughters commandeered this place, and we now have a kitchen and dining room there. So that's our little setup. And um, since it's shot in Canada, you always have to end with a sunset. Uh, this is a shot that um, a friend of mine took when I picked the plane up uh, after the Amphib floats were installed. So I've had them on now for about four years. I leave them on year-round. I live in Minnesota, and I've had the chance to visit Robert Murray on the island up there. And I must say, I'm from the land of 10,000 lakes, but this is the prettiest area I've ever seen. 